Hey guys. Uh, so I still run into folks who have been working with Harmony for a while and don't know what the set ease parameter tool is and how cool it is and how much work it saves and how it just makes you look so good. So I thought I'd just do a really quick thing on the set ease um, parameters tool. So it's a, it's an animation tool. It helps you do your animation. It's got a fancy name, but uh, to, so we're gonna need something to animate. So I'm just gonna do a ball here. So I'm just gonna use the ellipse tool and the paint tool, to make myself a little ball. And then I wanna recenter the pivot point. Oh, that's pretty close. But I wanna reset the pivot point, of course, in the center of my ball, because that makes a lot of sense. All right, so we got our animatable ball here. And uh, I'm just gonna go up here in the timeline, right click at the end and go uh, extend exposure, just so I got a ball across the whole timeline there. Okay, so we're animating this ball. So I'll put a keyframe over here at the start. And, uh, you know, let's say a keyframe here on frame 10. So at the start, it's going to be at the top of the screen. And at the bottom, at frame 10, you know, we want it to be here at the bottom of the screen. And I'm going to want to animate that. You know, I'm going to want to do some tweens between point A and point B. So I right click and go uh, set motion keyframe. Or if you've got a hotkey set up, minus 7, for example. All right, and then we get our auto tweening. So there you go, the ball goes from the top to the bottom. Now this is very basic tweening, right? Of course, there's no timing applied to it. If I turn on onion skinning here, and we go back to the front, you can see that all the timing is very even all the way through. And of course, you know, anybody who's studied animation knows that it should be kind of slow at the start, and then it speeds up as it reaches down the bottom. So what a lot of folks will do is they'll have their tweens, they'll spread it out, and then what they'll do is they'll just grab some keys, you know, kind of favoring the first drawing, the first drawing, and then they can reposition their keys, and then you get, you can see we kind of favor the top, and it gets quicker down at the bottom. Again, I'll turn on onion skinning, and you can see So we're very close up here at the top, and then it gets quick down here at the bottom. So that's a, that's a way to get timing. It's a little intensive, though, uh, time and, and labor intensive. So in steps the SETI's parameters tool. So I'll turn on auto tween again. So the tool, first of all, is right here. It looks like this. This is kind of innocuous, a uh, little button here. It looks like a couple of uh, S's. It's a couple of curves. So SETI's for multiple parameters. And you can see it explains itself there. Create speed patterns between motion keyframes. You can create different acceleration, deceleration patterns, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Anyway, it allows you to add timing. So I'll select a key, click that button, opens up this window. Right, you can see we've got a straight line here. So that straight line indicates the um, even timing that we've currently got. So uh, no curve indicates there's no timing. A straight line means it's going straight and evenly timed. So I can either grab this little red flag here and drag it out and create a curve which is going to create some timing. But you'll notice that as I play with this curve, it's also changing those numbers in the lower right-hand side there. So it's just a personal preference thing. And uh, just FYI, 0, 0 sets it back to being uh, evenly timed. It's just a personal preference thing, but I like to hand enter the numbers here. I find it's more exact. I get more control over it than, than trying to do it by the moving the flag there. But that's uh, entirely up to you. And again, just FYI, this, this, in case you haven't figured out, this flag box here represents this first keyframe, and this unflag box down here represents that second keyframe. So anyway, I'm going to enter, say, 50. Up here at the top, you'll see it creates a curve. And we got a nice smooth curve going from the top down to the bottom. And I'll hit Apply and Close. And now, if I tween, or if I scrub here on my tweens, you'll notice that we're, we're kind of favoring up at the top. It's a bit slow, and that speeds up towards the bottom. And again, if I go over here and turn on onion skinning, you can see that it's close up at the top and speeds up as it gets down towards the bottom. And you can go in and adjust these settings, play with them all you want. So let's say I want to make it 100. So it's going to be even more. Uh, 100 means it's going to favor that initial position even more. Hit apply and close. Turn that on. And you can see it's, it's favoring this top area even more. So the higher the number you enter, the more it's going to favor that initial key. And the bigger the gap is when it gets to the second key. 
And so I can use this to create, let's say a bouncing ball, nice basic animation thing. So I have it speed up down to here. Then the next key of course is gonna be the ball squashing. And then I'm gonna have the ball kind of stretch up into this. And since I'm going from here to here, I might want to tween that to have a transition from here to here. And again, initially, just adjust my onion skinning here. So initially, this timing is going to be very even. It's going to be very central. So if I want to, I can go in and adjust this timing so the ball favors that initial position. Then it's going to come back up. And I'm going to have it go back to its initial position so we can loop this animation. So I'll turn on auto tweening again. And I'm going to want to ease out here at the top of the uh, ease out here at the top of the bounce, right? Like it's going to slow as it gets to the top. So set these multiple parameters. Set that to 50. Apply. Close. All right. And I'll just adjust my sequence here. All right, and then if I play that, we got ourselves a bouncing ball. You can see it hangs at the top, speeds up to get to the bottom, all that good stuff a bouncing ball is supposed to do. So that's a basic intro to the settings for multiple parameters. I'll probably come back to this and show you it with a more advanced character animation at some point. But in the meantime, by all means, go ahead, get in there, play with it, mess around with it. Try adding some ease to your own animation and see what happens. It's just a really easy, quick way to add some uh, timing to your animation. Anyway, have fun with that. Enjoy, and I'll talk to you guys later.